This is what it takes to make Indonesia's famous textiles, intense concentration and an eye for detail. This technique of making prints, hand printing wax on dyed fabrics is called batik. This workshop in Jakarta is in a social housing complex and provides employment opportunities for the women who live here. But sales have fallen, with more people staying home because of the pandemic, there's less need for new clothes. We couldn't sell anything, so we had to use masks to attract buyers again, and that's what we are focusing on. It's what people need now. Masks are compulsory across Indonesia, and traditional textiles producers have helped to make them more accessible. We have to wear masks, so we need to help the government with that, because we all need to take care of our health. These fabrics are usually used to make shirts or dresses, but COVID-19 has changed that. Each month, this small team produces around 100 sheets of fabric, which they turn into masks. Like businesses around the world, they've had to adapt their practices and even their designs to stay afloat during the pandemic. Designing prints for masks makes painting the designs even more difficult. Prints have to be smaller and more detailed. We're used to working on large surfaces, but now we are using smaller surfaces. It is challenging for my eyes. Designer Nana Ariswari has also had to adapt to the reality of life during the pandemic. Some weeks, her popular brand, a modern take on ancient Javanese fabric, had no sales at all. We're using uh, our insights for what should we do during the pandemic. So uh, from there, I came with the ideas of uh, switching the, the needs from celebration fashion into uh, essentials, new essentials. Before the pandemic, dresses were the brand's most popular offering. These days, her handmade masks often sell out online. With cases of COVID-19 rising by thousands each day in Indonesia, the demand for reusable masks is likely to grow. Jessica Washington, Al Jazeera, Jakarta.